Hi, you guys. I am Asia O'Hara. Howdy, y'all. I'm Evie Oddly. Hi, guys. It's me, Cameron Michaels. Hi, I'm Derek Barry. I'm Vanessa Benji Mateo. And hello, it's me, Naomi Smalls, and we are the cast of VH1's RuPaul's Drag Race Vegas Review. We are here with BuzzFeed to play a simple game of truth or wine. The first question is, if Rue decided to retire tomorrow, which drag race queen do you think should take over the show? I will tell the truth, everybody knows, it is clearly me, Asia O'Hara. We are already in talks about my new series called Asia O'Hara's Drag Race. So clearly, I mean, the correct thing to do would be to just usher me into the role. Right. I also believe that it should become Asia O'Hara's Drag Race especially because we're already in production on like season 72 of Asia O'Hara's Drag Race. They're really short, but they get to the point. Probably Bianca Del Rito. That would be my vote. <laughs> I think that Tammy Brown should take over. I think that she would just really show how it's done, really show how to walk some children in nature. You know what I mean? I think Shandla would be fun. I'm like trying to drink at the same time. In my, my money's, I mean, I'm answering the question. I don't have to drink, do I? Okay, Shandla. <laughs> I'm also gonna say Bianca Del Rio just because she's the most famous and we know that she could sell out a theater. What is fame? It's everything. What will we do with Michelle then? Oh, she can go. Oh. <laughs> and we'll bring Lady Bunny in. Bianca Del Rio and Lady Bunny. Which season of Drag Race, in your opinion, do you think is the least iconic? Ooh, my gosh. I know so many people say season one because it's the last season, but I'm gonna go with season seven, only because I was on season eight, and I think that's really where Drag Race started for me. <laughs> Such a pageant answer. So many of the girls had the exact same makeup, and I think for season eight, everyone looked completely different, and I didn't really like their promos on the white wall. Ours was so much better in the hair salon. I feel kind of like the most recent one, uh, season 12. I would say some of my like least memorable like things are from season seven as well, maybe. But like, I'm still gonna drink my wine because I don't want to answer the rest of that though. Plus, I just want to drink. Oh, b that is so easy. Season seven. Season seven is the most boring, who gives a crap season I've ever seen. And it's not the girl's fault necessarily, it's just they all really sucked at all of the challenges. <laughs> on the runway. I'm gonna have to drink my wine on that one. Oh, girl, you have too many friends. <laughs> no, I have too few friends and I need to keep the ones that I have. <laughs> During my season of Drag Race, did I steal anything from the workroom? Oh, girl, yeah. Yes, indeed. And I would have stolen more if I was smart. Mostly it was just like all the scraps from all of my failed outfits that didn't work because so many things I had to like cut and change like last minute. I guess it's not really stealing. Oh no, it is stealing. I stole some nail polish that y'all are never getting it back. Well, you and I think are a little different because we were in the workroom all the way to the very end. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I definitely was like, okay, what is happening to this stuff? Like, since we're done, like, what are y'all gonna do with this stuff? So <laughs> I did, you know, a couple extra pair of, the shoes, uh, the fierce drag jewels, earrings. Of course, I was like, well, what if we're done filming. Y'all don't done. need this anymore. <laughs> yeah. What are y'all gonna do with this stuff? Nobody can give me a valid answer, so yeah, sure. If you were on a future season of All Stars, which queen would you be the least happiest to see enter the workroom? Mine would probably be Vanjie, and in a good way, there's no beating Vanjie on so many levels. Right? Uh, walking in and seeing her would be like, okay, well, I coulda stayed home. Like, I think she's, she's fun to be around. She's a great queen. She has great drag. The way the judges' faces light up when she walks down the runway is dangerous. It's reason enough to stay at home. The queen I would be the least happy to see would probably be Bianca Del Rio. A, because like we had one little scuffle and I already know that that would like turn into like something even though we've literally never worked together in person. And B, for much the same reasons as Asia, I think she is almost unbeatable at yeah, what she does. Unless untouchable. there's like a change your silhouette challenge, then I got that. <laughs> if you had to pick a winner of Drag Race to dethrone, who would it be? I would have to say Tara Sanchez. And it's not even so much with her like 
performance on the show, but just seeing like the way that she calls for attention and attacks others online and like threatens the, the fan base. If you're calling in bomb threats to DragCon, like a reason to take your crown away. And I honestly think that Raven's mirror message to Tyra is gonna be the most iconic thing that's ever <laughs> existed from Drag Race. Keep your eyes on the stars, cause you'll never be one. Oh, I love that <laughs> one. Welcome to the sky, cause you're not one. <laughs> Oh, I'm definitely saying Tyra. I didn't even have to think about it. Even though she's had a second and a third and a fourth and a fifth and a sixth and a seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth chance, uh, she just is not taking the hints. I mean, I think they even took her picture down. The last question was about the being the least iconic season, and this question is the least like is about dethroning, and and she's the least iconic winner from two. So I'm gonna just take a sip to that because I don't really want to answer that. BuzzFeed is messy! Yeah, y'all. BuzzFeed! I'm here for it, though. Even you, you as a line. winner, you cannot sit this one out. Okay, well, if I had to pick a winner, I want to dethrone. Oh my god, I'm gonna get so much hate for this. We're just jumping all the way back to season one, though. I would dethrone Bibi Zahar Benet because Nina Flowers is like my icon. And she's also the only girl from that season whose drag still looked Nirvana. like it's like modern today. Tyra Sanchez, sorry. Ooh, mama said it! Which Drag Race queen would be the last person you'd let do your makeup before a gig? <laughs> I, can't. I know these questions are so shady. I'm gonna say Eureka, only because we've had this conversation before <laughs> and we're like, we're like, we should paint each other. And I'm like, I'm not letting you do it before a show. <laughs> I would definitely say Magnolia Crawford because I love my nose so much and I never want my nose to look like hers. But Magnolia Crawford's a good pick. She loved that little uh... <laughs> Situation. I'm actually just so impressed by anyone who can do their own makeup, so respect that. I would probably have to say your roommate, Miss Vanji, Miss Silky Ganache. I saw that like video online and I got really a little terrified. That legendary tutorial. Well, uh, she ate my roommate, but yes. <laughs> okay, sorry, I thought you guys lived together. Okay, easy answer and I'll come back to mine. Like, it would have to be somebody like Rebecca Glasscock from like season one, back when they thought like drag makeup was like putting on a little bit of cover girl. And she was like really, really into not having the, the best makeup on that season. So, <laughs> there are so many I don't want near my face. Okay, I got mine. Probably the last queen I will want to do my makeup before a gig would probably be Candy Ho. Sorry. <laughs> Which Drag Race judge gives the worst critiques? RuPaul, Ross Matthews, Michelle Visage, or Carson Kressley? I don't think any of them give the worst critiques. I can only speak for my, myself and my experiences. I feel like every critique that I got was completely valid. For the most part, if you're a self-aware queen, you already know what's you right. You understand what's, what's about to pop out of their mouths, right? Yeah. That's why I got in so many fights during my season because like the judges would be like, you were terrible, you need to fix this, try this better. And then we'd get backstage and the girls would be like, nah, that was some bad judging. And I was like, was it bitch? On a scale of one to 10, 10 being the highest, how good of a host is Brooklyn Height on Canada's Drag Race? Who wrote these? question. <laughs> I absolutely love Brooklyn and I wish that she was more of a host uh, than a judge because I actually think that it should be like centered around her. It is Canada's Drag Race and I think that it should be hosted by Brooklyn instead of just a judge. I think she looks gorgeous and I think everything about Brooklyn is amazing so I'm gonna give her a 10. I agree. I think she's been doing great. She's mm -hmm. been a judge. I wish they put her to um, do more as well. I know all the fans is getting upset about the read, but I think it's a cute key. I mean, uh, I think that she's doing a really good job. I would probably say, like, as far as being a host, she's an eight out of ten. I was gonna say eight before you said eight. So I'm not just stealing your answer. Um, no, I mean, who else would host Canada's Drag Race except Brooklyn? Yeah. Okay, wait a minute, Buzzfeed. Who wrote these questions, Willow? This is ridiculous. Yeah, y'all are going deep in <laughs> with the knife. If I'm gonna stick with my character and be the honest person that I am, I'd say Brooks, like, especially for it being her season, she's like 
a good seven. I think Brooklyn has like a very critical eye. She has a long history of perfection beforehand. Having been through Drag Race herself, she seems to also really know how to connect with the girls and be like, hey, like, I get it. And I'm going to say something really mean to you, but it's only because I've been in your shoes. <laughs> I'm gonna give Brooklyn a solid eight. I think she's doing a good job for anyone that has to do that for the first time. Um, I think if she's brought back to future seasons, she'll do even better. Um, but if we're comparing her to Jeffrey Boyer Chapman, she's a solid 28. Oh, oh, 30,000. Do you think your uh, fellow Vegas review queen, Derek Barry, deserved to be eliminated first on All Stars 5? I sure hope so. I was the one who sent her home. <laughs> I don't, I, no, I do not think so. Derek was definitely nowhere near the top. I do not think Derek was the worst performance of the night when it came to that. Is that even a question? <laughs> Imagine how much more entertaining the season would be. Imagine like if it was graded based on the actual talent. And I just know that there was like a queen in there that did not know her words and was doing something very unoriginal. And I've got like very heated, passionate feelings about All Stars 5. But like, why do I care so much? Because I love Derek. <laughs> Oh, I love you. We're gonna like be like all lovey-dovey here and then it's like the show is gonna be like, what the fuck? I know. Yeah, I'm not just saying because we have Derek in our cast, but bitch, we was not the worst. Yeah, somebody out there was not knowing their words. They looked like they was freestyling. They didn't even come up with nothing. They was just a Wednesday at Mary's performance type tea. I'm gonna have to agree and I love the way this question is worded. It could have been worded really shady and asked, and if not, who? So I'm glad I don't have to say who, but somebody <laughs> probably else should have gone home first. Plus, you guys missed out on an opportunity to have really dramatic, amazing TV because Derek Barry is f***ing dramatic TV. Have to agree with all of the girls and I shouldn't have gone home first. I didn't even think I should be in the bottom two. I think it, if they wanted to do a bottom three, that could have been more dramatic. I mean, I'm just gonna say it should have been on Gina to go home. I just think it's embarrassing that you you are lip syncing 10 plus years later, RuPaul songs right in front of him and you don't know the words and whatever kind of break dancing that was, she should just stop. Put a big break in the dancing and uh, learn the words first. So if you're gonna lip sync as a talent, uh, Angina, head over to Cameron Michael's page because you can pick up some tips. Oh, thank you. Which queen deserves an award for the worst snatch game impersonation? I'm probably gonna go ahead and bite the bullet and say me. I was pretty terrible. And I don't know if it, I just feel it, like it was extra terrible because I was there and I lived it. And because now I feel bad, I'm gonna have a drink of wine in addition to that. My answer is a little more vague than that. It is literally anyone who has done Beyonce or Lady Gaga, because when, when has it been funny so far? When has it been funny? Which fellow Vegas review queen would you be the most afraid to lip sync for your life against? Honestly, Vanji, and not because I don't think I could beat her. Like I was preparing to do that on my season, but Vanji is so beloved that even if I did beat her, there would probably be like a mob with like pitchforks outside of my door right after like, Miss Vanji. I think the one, the person I would hate to lip sync against would be you, Evie. Most people when you lip, when they lip sync, you kind of know where you're gonna get. You kind of know there's gonna be a hot kick here, there's gonna be a split here, there's gonna be a wig reveal. <laughs> Evie is kind of like you have absolutely no idea where she's gonna be, what direction she's gonna come from. You'd probably be the one person I didn't want to lip sync against just because there's no predictability in anything you ever do. So. Yeah. Did Naomi do the right thing in eliminating Manila Luzon on All Stars 4? I'm absolutely going to say yes because I live for a dramatic turn of events. I watch the show for the drama. I think that if you just go throughout the entire competition and there's not a wrench thrown in it, then it's a lot like season eight where we knew Bob was gonna win. And so I like to watch a show that I have no idea. I'm gonna chime in and say the same thing because like we wouldn't fucking watch the show if it was boring and everyone's nice. When you give the girls the power to do those things, Everything's out the window. Like when the, you give the girls power to send people home, it's like, sorry, that's the game. That's how it's played. And the girls have full power, so. You got to be like, you got to go. And I kind of live, cause you know, nobody was expecting it. And it takes balls. Cause like, you know, people probably would be like, even myself, I would be like, Ooh, I don't know. But can we talk about how anybody else would have handled that as gracefully as Miss Naomi Smalls did? Yes, she did the right thing. Cause she's shady. Do what you want to do always at the end of the day, because you can like sleep at night knowing that. And like, girl, 
life's really not fair as a TV show. I think she hella did the right thing. Like, I think it is extremely messed up for Manila, who was like, yes, this is my season. I'm going to win. But it's a competition. And in the great words of Naomi Smalls, life's not fair. Thank you, BuzzFeed, so much for having us today. And now I'm drunk. <laughs> Stay tuned for more drama like this. Bye. Yeah.